Ibisu in Japan is the home of drift, and the fact that Mad Mike Gwadet considers his win there as one of the highlights of his year tells you just how special the place is. I mean, the track itself, the venue, it's like dreamland. There's nine different drift courses. It's literally a safari park as well. So you'll be in the pit, and there's like lions and tigers like right behind you. I mean, the character of that place is just, it represents Japan so well. That was the best chase I've done for years. The tracks themselves are really challenging, um, and Formula Drift, having one of their world championship rounds there, made a really awesome track. Very technical, you know, you're coming down that first straight, first, second, third, fourth gear, really high speed, massive, big, aggressive entries, which, you know, the Japanese are known for. And, you know, to, to progress all the way through and get the win there was, uh, meant a lot. That's a dream right there, man. Mike's about as popular and successful as it gets in motorsport. I mean, this is a guy with over 2 million Facebook followers. It's crazy now I can be in Japan or, you know, getting a Starbucks in the morning in the middle of America and, you know, some kids will be like, oh, man, Mike. And that just blows my mind, you know, coming from little New Zealand and now having such an awesome following. And that's, that's what also fuels me to do that next best crazy video clip or build this next craziest car. I try to think of these wild dreams and wild creations and then, you know, the fans all help because they're like, you know, oh, what if he did this motor and that? And then, you know, I get all these ideas and have amazing partners that we're able to, we're in a position to be able to do that sort of stuff. And these just aren't any partners. Mazda and Red Bull, just to name a couple. And that's pretty awesome for a guy that was once told he was paralysed from a motocross incident. I, you know, I landed in literally the commentator's face with a microphone and he's like, Matt Mike, are you going to jump back on your bike or what? And I'm like, like I can't, couldn't even breathe. So I'm freaking out, punching my legs, telling my mates, like, ah, kick my legs, kick my legs, I can't feel my legs. Freaking out. And then later on that night, be told that I'm going to be paralysed for life from a T7. It was um, a pretty scary moment, one that probably didn't sink in as deep as one would think, but it was the next morning when I woke up feeling this crazy pins and needles in my, uh, in my right toes. And uh, again, yelling out like, nurse, nurse, I can feel my feet, I can feel my feet. And um, what it was, was the swelling pinched the nerves in my spine, which cut all the feeling. Um, and as the swelling went down, I was able to feel my feet again. And that, uh, that was a big opener. And that was probably the time when I realized like I need to find something else. And then we discovered drifting. The coolest thing was I was able to take my friends in the passenger seat. You know, they'd come and watch me flip bikes and they'd all be like, oh yeah, Mike's crazy, but they could never have that feeling of flying and doing these big supermans and stuff. But the drifting, you can literally, I mean, I'm a terrible passenger myself. I hate being a passenger. So putting someone in the passenger seat of my car, uh, yeah, I, mean, I didn't know what that feels like, but um, yeah, I think the, dr the drifting just came around. It was good timing. And Mike would be the first one to tell you that drifting never stops. There's always new roads to explore, and you can always go faster. But there's other opportunities too, like circuit racing. You know, from meeting Tony Quinn, a few years back now, um, you know, we've worked on some pretty cool projects together and for him to just bring up like, oh, just super casual, like do you want to jump in my GT and race the McLaren at the final round of the Australian GT Championship, Highlands 101 and Hampton 101, um, just such an amazing offer. And when an opportunity like that presents itself, it's handy to know guys like Shane Van Gisbergen. So I took it very seriously, you know, straight away got on the phone to SVG and we went out to Hampton Downs um, and since it's been revamped on the new track and did some testing out there for a day you know the first thing he said he said you need to slow down to be faster and that was probably the best advice uh, you know I could have had
in a GT, you have to be so delicate. The inputs still need to be sharp and aggressive, but it needs to be very smooth and fluent. So these all things that, you know, the help of SVG and, you know, Murph has also been a massive help. He's been at all the events. So, you know, to have the guys that are, you know, proven themselves and have this discipline nailed uh, has been a real great, success, you know, help to my success in this discipline. So what's next for one of the biggest names in world motorsport? I'm on the same page as Tony Quinn on trying to grow motorsport in New Zealand and I've proven it's it's possible. You don't need to start with a big budget, you just need that dream at the start, a whole lot of determination and passion and I want to show this to the youngsters and or in any demographic here in New Zealand but to have the facilities now of Hampton Downs and Highlands that are both you know world-class venues, we've got the place. The Kiwis have the talent and just a little bit of mentoring and stuff and hopefully my story can rub off on a few others and um, help them pursue their dreams.